Hey, what's up? This is Minnesota 36. Uh, this is a review for the Transformers Adventure Decepticon Run Amok. This is the box it came in. It was a two pack originally with uh, the uh, TAV dogfight, but I felt I didn't need another. Uh, repaint of the power glide mode so I ended up selling it and just kept it for the box to store Runamuck and his partner Runabout uh, apparently I like this mold uh, I don't know exactly how many uh, repaints were released for it but I have four right here uh, this is Combiner Wars uh, Hot Rod and Blackjack and of course TV's uh, Runamuck and Runabouts so I think they were exclusive only to Japan and let's take a look at the mold so if you can see it's a nice looking uh, I guess Cybertronian type sports car uh, it's white all around the shield let's look at the shield for a bit okay overall looks good uh, no paint on the wheels, but the logo is painted on. Painted on, and uh, it's all around the car. There used to be, it originally came with the logo on the windshield, back windshield, but uh, I decided I don't care for the TV mold on there, so I took it off uh, both molds actually, and uh, I think it looks better like that. But of course, your preference might differ. All right, it rolls just fine, just like all the other molds. And it's pretty much a straight uh, repaint, uh, as you can see they all look the same, just uh, different colors. Okay. And this is the old mold underneath, it cleans up fairly well, can't really see much cable. It's pretty hollow, but what do you expect for a Legends class figure? Uh, price wise, it's pretty expensive. I believe this set was about $45 USD from the mail-in magazine that it came with um, yeah, while each combiner were I believe it's uh, maybe retail $10 US dollars uh, this was about 1200 yen uh, which came out to roughly 10 or 11 US dollars so this is clearly the most expensive one at double the price it's uh, one of these uh, exclusive figures Japan loves to promote. I don't understand why. Uh, there's no benefit in it for the collector. And they sell less of the product. So, you know, whatever. But, focus problems. But this is the mode. It's pretty nice, I think. And now I'm going to get some comparison shots in here. We have a. Combiner of Wars Deluxe Prowl. This is a Generations Hot Rod, Henke version Hot Rod. I have a G1 Wheelie. Let's see the size comparison there. And I have a Generations uh, Gears. Let's see. There, they scale pretty well there. And it's last, I have a G1 Ironhide. Um, actually, not too bad of a scale there. Okay, now uh, we'll take a look at it in robot mode. Okay, to transform this guy, what you do is you Flip open the arms here, like this, both sides of course, and you untap the legs, okay, you untap, untap this entire uh, midsection uh, hood here, that comes out like that, and This whole 
assembly moves up the chest comes over or the back I should say and the chest goes down and straighten it out a bit and there you go okay. and you can put the sword uh, the spoiler becomes the sword or weapon and here it is and as you can see you can the head rotates it's on a swivel there's uh, it's a slight up and down but not nah, really doesn't really hold the uh, leg articulation legs can bend 90 degrees can do a high step kind of pose you can kind of balance it like so uh, I'm sure you could after a few minutes of messing around with it and the arms are on a ball joint you got a elbow joint the uh, hands don't rotate at all they're a one piece uh, molded onto the figure and it looks from the side the back the back is a big mess but what do you expect from a legend class figure the joints hold pretty well considering how many repaints are in the mold you can see you can holds up pretty well and let's compare it to the other figures all right and here he is with his mold mates right, looks good in the group Okay, his face sculpt oh, looks pretty, pretty good, pretty spot on. Oh, nice homage to the G1 characters. And if you can see, it's different from the the blackjack and the hot rod figures. Yeah, different face sculpts all together so that's uh, pretty cool I think and here they are compared with some other figures in robo mode we have uh, TV roll bar the generation skids uh, mold. Here is a Combiner Wars uh, Mirage. Of course, that's the uh, Unite Warriors version. Here is a Legends Class Shockwave Combiner Wars. Roughly the same size. We have a Generations Swerve. We have a R.I.D. Legends Fix It and a G1 Swerve as well. But overall, I think it's a pretty nice figure. All right, final thoughts on this figure. Uh, this, you know, it's a pricey one. It was a Japanese uh, publication exclusive uh, figure, mail-in. Uh, and that was about $45 USD uh, shipped as a set and even though I'm sure one of the big uh, website stores will carry it uh, the set probably will not go less than $50 USD so you're talking roughly $25 for this one figure uh, I'm sure not many people will be buying the dog fights um, so if you're willing to spend uh, twenty, at least twenty dollars on the figure, it's a good piece to have. Now, if you already have the TAV runabout, uh, you definitely need the runamuck as they are a pair. 
brothers or whatever you want to call it. Overall, the, the mode is great, I think. Uh, I own four, so obviously I like it. Um, but if you collect Legends figures, yeah, this is, this is a must-buy. It's a no-brainer. Uh, the price point may turn people off, uh, but if you have the means to, uh, it's definitely a piece worth buying. And uh, overall, I would give it a... Let's see, on a 10 scale, I'd give it a 8 as a figure. Uh, just because uh, the price brings down the uh, overall rating, I think. But this uh, has been my review on the TAV Runamuck Transformers Adventure. And I'll see you next time.